for trustees to order, let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6 p.m. If everyone would please stand as Mr. John's husband leads us in the invocation and Mr. Dacre and William in the pledges. As we bow in prayer, let us keep in mind our neighbors to the north that have been suffering with the horrific weather, the damages <coughs> to their communities. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we don't have to look very far from this room to know how blessed we are. These young people that represent the very best of the best of what we have. We are so thankful for them. We are thankful for the educators that teach them. And we're thankful for the administration that so effectively manages the school district so that it can be a blessing to all. Father, we ask that you continue to remember us in all our decisions. Give us the wisdom and the courage to make the right decision. We also ask that you give a special measure of comfort to our friends to the north in Oklahoma that are suffering loss of property and life and friends and family and children. Father, do as what you can only do in comforting them. We ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Next item on the agenda is awards and recognition. The first robotics world championship, Texas Torp. Dr. Stockton. It's going to be an exciting meeting. I just, I just have a feeling. It's going to be exciting. At this time, I want to invite Cheryl Heim, who's our coordinator of science, to the podium. Mr. Sanders, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, the Texas Torque 1477 robotics team which is made up of students from the Woodlands College Park High School, the Woodlands High School, and Oak Ridge High School, was part of a three-team alliance that won the World Championship title at the For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology first Robotics World Championship. It was held at the Edward, D Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, April 24th through 27th. The Conroe IS team ISD team, along with two Canadian teams, Theory 6 and the Coyotes, formed the Blue Alliance to compete with and win the world title. The competition began when first sent our teams a set of parts to build a robot within a six week time period. The teams accomplished, competed, com, accom, competed and accomplished in regionals the opportunity to advance to finals. 400 teams from over 15 countries made it to the national competition. These outstanding students have wonderful mentors who I am honored to introduce to you at this time. Please welcome to the podium, Mr. Scott Ripito, who is a teacher at the Woodlands College Park High School and the Woodlands High School teacher, Mr. Matt Davies. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to recognize a couple other people that are here real quick, um, a couple other mentors that are with us this evening before we recognize the students. Uh, we have back here uh, James Tontat. If you'll stand up real quick. James is our... Another person that's hiding back there, she's in charge of food. Uh, there's two of them, actually. Uh, Marianne Booker and Rebecca Noren. <laughs> the 
there's a lot of other people that are responsible for our success, uh, but most of it is the students. And so that this is really about recognizing them. Uh, we did bring the robot up tonight so that uh, you might be able to see a little bit about what a world championship robot looks like. <laughs> so they'll uh, take a moment to demonstrate what it does. The game this year was uh, shooting Frisbees. It's not going to shoot any Frisbees. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to catch the Frisbee from this robot. So the, the lights, I always like pretty lights on the robot, but they serve a purpose also. The uh, When they were rainbow, it meant the robot was disabled. When it was yellow, it meant the air pressure was too low, so it couldn't do what it's supposed to do. And right now it's blue because we're Blue Alliance. That was the alliance we were when we won. Another thing that we could do that a lot of robots couldn't is we could pick up off the ground. So hopefully we can pick up off the ground right now. In competition, we'd, we'd run. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, you don't want to do that. Uh, one of the changes we made uh, after the last regionals, we put new shooter wheels on there, so it shoots a lot harder than it used to. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, this is uh, another, I just want to share a quick story about, about the robot, and that is, uh, it really is the kids that, that know all this stuff because this afternoon and yesterday we were having some problems with the elevator. Um, the robot can elevate normally. It can't right now because there's an issue with uh, one of the gearboxes. I didn't know what was wrong. Okay, the kids looked at it, spent maybe five minutes looking at it and they figured out what was wrong and told me how long it would take to fix it and everything. I don't know that. The programming, I don't know that. You know, Tommy back there, he's he's the lead programmer and there's a team that works with him. I don't know what's going on with the program. I can help a little bit with the logic, but they know everything. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're so successful is because uh, the kids do run the team. And it makes our team a little bit different from uh, some of the others is how much they're involved. So, What did you start from? Where did we start from? <laughs> What did you start from? I mean, I see the end product. <laughs> Is there anything on that robot that didn't come in that box? Yeah. Uh, pretty much everything on the robot doesn't come in the box. Uh, <laughs> you, you're given motors. You're given uh, the processor. It's called a C-Rio. Uh, you're given uh, a lot of the electronics are specified. The ones that control the motors. Uh, the relays that are on there, those are all specified. The pneumatics, there's very stringent rules about what you can use for the pneumatics because of the danger involved with those. Uh, but, and, and then there's uh, the weight. The robot can't weigh more than 120 pounds without the bumpers and stuff. When it's all weight, everything's on, it's about 150 pounds. Uh, the maximum height uh, is set and the perimeter is set to 112 inches this year. And that changes uh, from year to year. So um, the robot, the drive chassis is kind of uh, evolves over the over time. So this drive chassis is similar to last year's drive chassis, which is kind of built on some things we learned from the previous year. So the wheels, that part's kind of set, but what you see above it, that's that's all brand new just for this year. So we I mean, we had no idea what it was going to be like until. We saw the problem. We had a pretty good idea what the drive chassis would look like. Uh, we have custom gearboxes on there. Uh, James is responsible for a lot of that. Uh, and uh, anyway, so any other questions you want to ask? <laughs> You're more than welcome to can take a turn kind of driving can if you can want to try. Can the kids, the kids diagnose cars that fast and fix them? <laughs> <laughs> Deal. I need them they, to work on. they don't have a clue about the car. No. <laughs> Mr. Ripito, since it's still pointing at me, is it disarmed right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's rainbow, so it's disabled. Okay. You're, you're safe. Yeah. 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 
so we have some students we'd like to recognize tonight. Uh, I think we'd like them to come up and get the certificate. So uh, first, uh, Austin Bay. Uh, Matthew Bartell. <laughs> Sheila Berenji Jile. Come up here. There you go. Mm -hmm. Getting out that easy. Uh, Josh Baradon. <laughs> Chris Delado. Chris Bilodeau. <laughs> Taylor Brown. <laughs> Tommy Brown. <laughs> Did Taylor not come? Oh, okay. Well, you can you can take both of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Colton Coates. Aaron Gravy. <laughs> Chance Gristy. Bradley Holloway. Grant Jacobson. Vaishu Keyshore. <laughs> Bryce Copa Cubut. <laughs> Copa Cubits. Vikram Krishnan. Vice <laughs> Landwer. Heiss, Landwer. <laughs> Alexander Lavasco. <laughs> Jacob Lubecki. <laughs> Nicholas McCoy. <laughs> Eric Meniz. Jay Montano. <laughs> Chase Norn. <laughs> Robert Oakley. <laughs> Our team captain, Sham Raghavan. Our Frenchman, Arthur Sonnier. <laughs> Our Norwegian, Henning Stow. <laughs> Dana Steiner. <laughs> and Claire Wagaman. Caroline Wagaman. <laughs> Brian Wang. <laughs> Zach Winkle. <laughs> and Jeffrey Zhang. Also with us tonight's another mentor, Connor McMahon. <laughs> yeah. 
get that all in one shot. <laughs> it's going to be the national anthem yeah. in the key of C. Okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Let me congratulate all of you. You made the CISD proud. And with your skills, you've gone a long way. But you know, every good group, successful team, is there because they had a good leader. So I want to recognize the leaders tonight. The Board of Trustees recognizes Matt Davies and Scott Ripto, Texas Tort 2013 First Robotics World Champions, May 21st, 2013. Oh, 
that clear than that, didn't it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I know, I can have it the way it is. Uh, actually, we got Jessica going back. What's your turn, man? All right, all right, all right. Jumping the gun. 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 Email and I forgot since I read it. What these kids have done, where they're from. They've been in the programs of freshman year. They struggled with freshman year. They work with the counselors. They I think one thing on the campus is they can learn from the trips to whatever. They can prepare their systems when they graduate. Sherry's going to share some information about that. All right. Next item on the agenda is under awards <laughs> recognitions is special district recognition students together achieving results. SAR program, Dr. Stockton. I'd like to invite Sherry Sunderman, who's our coordinator of guidance and counseling. Uh, come to the podium, please, Mrs. Sunderman. Mr. Sanders, members of the board and Dr. Stockton. In 2007, a new program called SAR, Students Together Achieving Results, was created. This May, we celebrate the fourth graduating class. These amazing students have touched the lives of those who have had the privilege of working with them. This group of graduates has participated in many activities, including the district ropes course. They visited Lone Star North Harris, Texas A&M, Texas A&M Galveston, University of Houston Hilton College, Glenn, and Sam Houston State University. They've also participated in a career day at Lone Star Montgomery College. Campus counselors meet with these students on a regular basis. And I may be Adriel, I may raise your hand back here. Uh, our district college readiness specialist has organized this special events and met with the counselors to plan future activities. Due to all the activities that are going on at this time of year, not all the counselors could be here tonight, but they wanted these students to know that they were here in spirit with them. An exit survey conducted with this graduating group has given us the following information. 94% have currently passed all sections of tax. 78% are first generation students. 88% report that the program has given them the opportunity to get to know adults on their campus. 78% said in eighth grade, they thought they could go to college. Those who didn't said they thought they couldn't afford college, they didn't know what they wanted to do, or they just didn't think they could do it. When asked how their view of their future has changed, some of the answers were, I now have a clearer picture of what I want to do. I am now more dedicated and more interested. STAR has helped me to move on. I now make good decisions. I got my act together. Everything has changed. It's good for me. I thought college wouldn't be out of my, I couldn't, would be out of my budget, but now I know I can do it. Even though I have a child, I've kept my goals. I've learned that we have choices. Careers in which they are interested are architecture, cosmetology, international business, nursing, art, an English teacher, an elementary teacher, gaming design, pastry chef, Navy SEALs, photography, criminal justice. And just like our other students, their plans after high school or to your college, for your college, uh, technical school, military, or work. Um, about four years ago, Mrs. Villarreal and I uh, got the opportunity to present our program to a group called the Texas Consortium of School Research. And they've been helping us do research, see how effective our program is. Hot off the press, just in today, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to share some information with you. They found um, significant findings for referrals in 2011 in favor of our program students more referrals for, for the comparison students than more the kids in the program. Significant findings for tax, exit reading, math, and science in favor of our program students. Significant findings in GPA in 2009, 2011, 2012 in favor of our program students. Significant findings for referrals and credits in 2012 in favor of the program students or referrals for our comparison students. So now we know we're on the right track and we're continuing to work toward that. We are so proud of this group of young men and women. Tonight we have two speakers who would like to speak on behalf of the group. After they speak, our students will be introduced by uh, the 
representatives from the campuses. Um, from Caney Creek High School, Diane Hernandez. From Conroe High School, Kay Roberts. From uh, uh, Hawk High School, Sigrid Woods. Oak Ridge High School, Mary Lou Harbin. Uh, the Woodlands College Park High School, A.J. Levicki, and Woodlands High School, Paulette Nelson. Our speakers this evening are Savannah Thomason from Oak Ridge High School and Tracy McCaffrey from Caney Creek High School, and I'd like to call them to the mic now. First of all, Savannah. <laughs> My name is Savannah Thomason, and I am here to tell you how SAR has impacted my life. I was very excited when Ms. Costas asked me if I was interested in joining this program my freshman year. My sophomore year, I kind of got off track and wasn't caring about school, didn't plan on college, and basically already had senior eyes. But all of my counselors in the SAR program did whatever they could to get me back on track. We went and toured Lone Star Montgomery, and that's when it got exciting. I was ready for college and I was so excited to go. I have already, <laughs> I have always wanted to be, become a teacher and so that's what I was determined to do. My junior year hit, I was pregnant and found myself asking how I'm going to do this. How am I going to make it through high school and college with me? With the encouragement of Ms. Algaze, Ms. Barry, Ms. Costas, and Ms. Reed, I got through junior year just fine. I saw my tax test, the flying colors. Now my senior year, it has been very hard to maintain my grades and get my credits to graduate with my classmates. But Ms. Harvin and Ms. Stokes have done so much to help me through it. They have had speakers come talk to us about how to get in school even with faith. The STAR program has shown me how many different opportunities there are for me and my education after high school. To me, the STAR program is a chance to get an extra inside look on the college experience and extra opportunities to learn about the different colleges and what each one has to offer. Tracy McCaffrey from I'm Tracy McCaffrey, and I've been a star since my freshman year. It really has been an eye opener for me. When they first asked me if I would like to be in the program, I honestly <laughs> didn't know what it was. I figured it was just something to get out of the class. Stars has shown me many different colleges and career choices. That would be good for my future. Being in the program has shown me that you can go out into the world and make something of yourself. Four stars, to be honest, I didn't think about college. I told my parents I would go just to make them happy, but I didn't feel like I wanted to. I really enjoy stars, and it helps me pick out the college I'm going to. I'm going to start in Lone Star this fall into going into nursing, be an ultrasound technician. SARS program has truly made a difference to me. I would like to thank all of you administrators, teachers, counselors, and leaders for letting us have this program. It has made an impact in many of our lives. We may not show it a lot and we may not appreciate it, but we would all like to say thank you. So on behalf of the class of 2013, thank you all for letting this program be part of our lives and hopefully this program will continue. Thank you. Okay, our first STARS member from uh, Caney Creek High School is Anthony Garcia. And then we have Cody Lawrence. <clears throat> and next we have Megan Legendre. <clears throat> and 
And finally, Tracy McCaffrey. Hello, we have two representatives from Conroe High School this evening. The first one is Johnny Gayaga. So, so cute. Okay. Uh, and the next young man is Omar Lopez. From Hawk Academic Alternative High School, we have two star students, Jeffrey Hilton. <laughs> and we also have Nancy Santa Maria. Good evening. Uh, I'm Mary Lou Harbin, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the board for caring for our kids and allocating funds and all your time and hard work to making these uh, our future uh, a successful group of students here. Uh, from Oak Ridge High School, we have Darius Johnson, who plans to be an electrician. And next we have Savannah Thomason, and she plans to be a sound ultrasound technician. Thank you. From the Woodlands College Park High School, Alexandra Foss. It's with great honor that I present two of the star students from the Woodlands High School, uh, Kim Tercios and <laughs> she has shared with me that she plans to go to Lone Star and then transfer to U of H to become a teacher. <laughs> the next student is Darius Ford. Darius, Darius is planning to go into Navy SEALs, so congratulations. I wasn't going to say anything, but I just realized that I taught three of you guys when you were in junior high. And I knew back then that you guys would be successful, and I'm so proud of you for being here today. So congratulations, guys, on all your hard work. and. May your futures be as bright as the sun. That was you. If you get behind it, it will just curve right around there. All right. One moment. We would like to invite the parents of our star students to join us in the large conference <coughs> room right around the corner for some refreshments. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs>
All right, awards and recognition, item C, Special District Recognition Child Nutrition Ambassador Awards, Dr. Stock. I'd like to invite Robert Hughes, who's our Interim Director of Child Nutrition, to the podium. Mr. Sanders, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I would like to thank the board for allowing me to recognize our employees tonight for the Ambassador Awards. Our first award goes to Mi Young Kugel from Irons Junior High Cafeteria. <laughs> Young has been with the district four years. She comes to work every morning with a smile. She takes pride in her work and is always willing to help where needed. She's truly an asset to CISD. <laughs> Our next award goes to Maria Villa Cresses from Derrichen Elementary Cafeteria. Maria has been an employee for four years and has moved into a management position this year with her positive attitude and eagerness to work. We're so happy to have Maria on our team. Thank you. You haven't sung your solo yet. That's right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you for all your donations. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for all you do for this. All right, awards and recognition, item D, Special District Recognition, Transportation Ambassador Awards, Dr. Stock. Yeah, I'd like to invite Mr. Sam Davila, Director of Transportation, to the podium to make the announcements. <coughs> Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stock, and members of the board, thank you for the opportunity today to uh, present uh, these fine employees for their recognition. We like to call it the Extra Mile Award since they go that extra mile on the school buses <laughs> uh, to make sure our students are served. Uh, these employees have uh, demonstrated such uh, professionalism and outstanding um, attendance and just being able to be there for our students. And seeing all the students today that was recognized, it just makes us all proud that we're a part of that to make sure that these students get the education and get to school and get to the trips where they need to go. So um, without ado, uh, Jackie Money. Jacqueline? Jackie's our operations specialist at the Woodlands Transportation Center. Don't let the cane fool you. She drives, she does everything. Whenever we need it, she, Jackie's there. Lacey Austin? Uh, Lacey was uh, one of our trainers, and she was recently promoted to my secretary. So uh, she has a hands full. So. Norma Fives. Norma Fives is our training coordinator, so every bus driver, every coach that comes through, uh, our training department uh, sees Norma at some point. She makes sure that they're well trained and they're ready to uh, drive those buses. Very good. Vicky Acosta. Vicky is one of our drivers at our Conroe Transportation Center, and uh, she's always there uh, whenever, whenever <laughs> she's needed. She's always there to help the supervisors and make sure that our students are picked up. And George Vincent. George is one of our drivers from the Woodland Transportation Center. And I'm sorry to say that I didn't recognize him at first. <laughs> I don't always get to get out and see all of our employees, but they're always doing such wonderful things. And uh, he's making sure uh, he had an incident on one of his routes and he did the right thing to make sure that there was actually a, a worker on the side of the road that didn't get hurt. 
Uh, he was attentive at what he was doing, and that's what makes our folks so great. You'll turn this way. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do. <clears throat> for all you do. Thanks, Ken. So much for all you Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for all your new hands. I appreciate you. Thank you for all your new hands. I appreciate you. Thank you for all your new hands. I appreciate you. Thank you for all your new hands. I appreciate you. Thank you for all your new hands. I appreciate you. Thank you for all your new hands. I appreciate you. Thank you for all Good start to a meeting. <laughs> Item E is citizen participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? All right. We'll continue on to the consent agenda. I would like to remove item F uh, from that agenda at this time. I uh, have a conflict of interest due to my employer being one of the bidders, and so I will not participate in the discussion or the vote of item F. So removing item F from the consent agenda, does anyone else have any additional items that they would like to remove from the consent agenda? Hearing none, do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Not. All those in favor? And all opposed? Right. All right. Um, we'll be bringing item uh, 3F uh, due to uh, our president's uh, abstention. Um, it's the bank depository. Uh, Dr. Thing. Uh, nothing. Does anybody have any, any discussion? Seeing that none is necessary, uh, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed? And uh, one abstention. Madam Secretary. Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. Husbands. We appreciate that. All right. Item four, administration A, approval of the Ann K. Snyder Elementary School mascot. Dr. Stockton. I will ask Dr. Dr. Kathy Gibson to come to the podium to present this uh, item for your decision. Good evening, President Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stockton. Mascot nominations were presented for Ann K. Snyder Elementary School, the Board of Trustees, as, it, as an information item at the April 16th meeting. We are now asking that the Board, that the board uh, approve a mascot for the Ann K. Snyder Elementary School. We have two nominations. One is for the actual mascot is Scholars, and the other is Stallions. And we have two different color schemes for you. We have uh, the green and gold in each one of these nominations. And we also have red and blue, which also matches the school colors. We're asking you this evening to approve a mascot for Ann K. Snyder Elementary School. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, Snyder Elementary School stallions in red and blue. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed. All right, motion carries. Item 4B, color boards for Flex School 14 and Flex School 16. Dr. Stein. I will, uh, before I introduce that item, I'll point out that Principal Lindsay Ardwan is in the, in the uh, audience. So you have a mascot now? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll ask Easy Foster to come to the podium to, to introduce that item. Good evening, <clears throat> President Stockton, or President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. I want to invite Ian Powell, <laughs> partner with PBK, to present the colors for Flex Schools number 14 and number 16, which are currently under construction. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, it's our pleasure to be here tonight to present the interior color selections that the uh, that were arrived at through several meetings. Uh, Dr. Stockton, Dr. Gibson, others on administrative staff. So cutting right to the chase, these are the elevations. They are described for both Flex 14 and Flex 16. 
Uh, one thing I will point out that this is the school in which um, in prior action you had uh, authorized placing the library access off of the commons area, which has changed in prior schools. This is the um, patterning for the walls in the serving area of the kitchen. This is a section cut to the library area, showing how the colors will be applied on the walls and acoustical panels in the high ceiling areas. A classroom chord elevation is described below that. Orchestra, fine arts, and band room elevations, and describing the continuation of the color scheme through the building, as well as in the gymnasium and the play space. Floor patterns are also part of the things that are reviewed and looked at. An opportunity to provide sort of a splash of color and, uh, and variety in the school. Most of it concentrates within the commons area and the cafeteria space. It shows the, the extension of tile throughout the building. Floor patterns for the vinyl tile within the uh, fine arts and music spaces in the clinic. Restrooms showing both floor patterns as well as wall patterns. That's it. Does that answer any questions you have? Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. Yes. All right. Item 4C, approval of GMP plumbing repairs at Conroe High School. Uh, Mr. Foster, I'll ask you to come back to the podium. <clears throat> Good evening. President Sanders, Dr. Stock, members of the board. I'm bringing forward tonight for your approval uh, plumbing repairs at Conroe High School. I included in the <clears throat> board package this week uh, a memo explaining how we arrived at this issue and what we do to, to fix it, uh, maintenance has alerted us to an issue that there are uh, is beyond their capability of repair. We investigated. We have determined what the best course of action repairing is. We anticipate the Brookstone construction starting that work this summer. Uh, the budgeted amount is six hundred ninety-seven thousand four hundred dollars. Funding for these repairs comes from the two thousand eight bond reference. Is there a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? I just had a question. Certainly. My understanding is the pipeline was from 1964, so it, it held up pretty good, I mean, I guess. Yeah, and I'm just shy of 50 years, um, which is a reasonable <laughs> life expectancy. I, I would agree. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make so, that comment. So why is it $700,000? Are we going to bust out concrete through the Tiger Den? We, we are not busting out very much. Uh, we've we've elected, and I brought a sample with me, of a, uh, a method of rebuilding the pipe from the inside out. Because um, we found some, through some video investigation, found some damages to the pipe specific, I mean, in specific areas. Uh, and we found a, a company that can clean those pipes out, mechanically remove any obstruction, and then rebuild the pipe from the inside out. If you'd like to see a sample, I have one to pass around, but it, it's not a small, uh, it's rather heavy. So. I'd be happy to show you now or calling. It's curious. How do you do it? Sure. Since you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Understand this what City of Conroe is running under the streets to fix the sewer pipe. All right. It is. Um, this is a representation of the, the finished product. Um, the, the process is, I mean, much similar to how you investigated a, uh, uh, a tractor mounted mechanical cutter actually mechanically moves through the pipe and removes obstructions, roots, debris, uh, anywhere pipes are misaligned. It, it cuts the earth and pipe out of the way to make a, a smooth passage. Uh, this material is then mechanically inserted through the pipe as well. Uh, the, the bladder on the inside is inflated with air and water to 1,600, that's 1,600 PSI. Uh, and that inflates everything and then the the fabric is is saturated with the, the resin material so we end up with a uh, a fiberglass reinforced resin that is the inside of the pipe and then once the bladder is removed you end up with a, a nice structure in, in place all right any other <clears throat> discussion or comment that our kids could have done that those robots. <laughs> <laughs> that little robot. Is that a little robot that goes through that line? <laughs> What's the uh, life expectancy for the new deal there? Um, with uh, not I mean, assuming the earth doesn't move uh, and damage the pipe, uh, I mean, it should get us another you know, 30, 40, 50. 
All right, any other questions or comments? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? All opposed? Motion passes. By the way, that wasn't a model we hired to show you the play. <laughs> <laughs> we did a great job. We, great great job. Well, I was, we were questioning your case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item 4D, approval of HVAC upgrades, Dr. Stock. Mr. Foster. Again, President Sanders, Dr. Stock, members of the board, I bring for your uh, approval tonight HVAC upgrades, which is heating, ventilation, and cooling upgrades to several campuses uh, to be done this summer. Specifically at Vogel Intermediate, we're uh, going to update the uh, valves and controls for the air conditioning systems there. At Connor High School, we are replacing a boiler that is at the end of its useful service life. At Cane Creek High School, we are doing some work to install isolation valves in preparation for chiller replacements later in the year. Uh, at that time or this summer, we are actually we are also going to flush the, uh, the piping for the uh, mechanical system. Uh, and doing the valves now allows us to flush now so we're not rushed when we do chiller replacements later. Uh, the work here will include plumbing, fire protection, asbestos removal, temporary air conditioning, testing, balancing, and uh, all the ancillary items associated with it. The budget is $709,392, and the funding is from the 2008 bond referendum. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? All right. If not, all those in favor and all those opposed? Motion carries. Item 4E, bond referendum update, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Foster, I'll ask you to present the last item. Again, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, this is our update for the current projects under construction within the 2008 bond referendum. Starting with the Conroe High School ninth grade campus. This project is uh, approximately 50% complete. Uh, it will be open for school this summer. It is currently on schedule. The uh, exterior brickwork is approximately 70% complete. Uh, the critical path for this particular job is the gymnasium remodels. Uh, the flooring is going in, the air conditioning systems, air conditioning systems are active, uh, and that is proceeding as, as planned. Uh, the finishes are, are beginning. Uh, as you can see some water on the floor here, the windows are, are come following the masonry cleanup. Move along to Ann K. Snyder Elementary School. This project is very near completion. It is scheduled for opening this summer. The administration turns over to Connor ISD to move in furniture on the week of June the 10th. The classrooms uh, are scheduled to receive their furniture and move in on the week of July the 10th. Go stay. Yes, sir. As you can see, the, uh, the red and blue color scheme is a good selection for the mascot. Uh, the finishes and furniture are uh, library furnishings are coming together well. At John P. John V. Pete Junior High School, uh, this project is also nearing completion. It is scheduled to open this summer. I'm going to tell you something. People won't shut up about this school right here. They are <coughs> all. I mean, they are bragging about it big time. How beautiful it is. I had an opportunity to, about two weeks ago to take Dr. Pete on a tour of, of his school, and he was uh, speechless. He was. He got an upgrade. Well, I'm not going to say. <laughs> New school. New school. New school, sorry. Again, it is nearing completion. It is scheduled to open this summer. Uh, the admin areas, like Snyder, are scheduled to receive their furniture the week of June the 10th. The uh, classrooms are scheduled to receive their furniture the weeks of July the 10th. Uh, it's in much the same condition. The finishes are coming together. The air, condi air conditioning systems are running. Uh, it is in, in its wind down, clean up mode. Have we, have we dealt with uh, the kids not wanting to leave there and go back to the other school or high school? Is uh, so nice? Well, I can tell you, I'm not in charge of the students. Moving right along. I'm going to pay for that one easy. Uh, uh, moving to Flex School number 14. This, this school is scheduled to open in August of 2014. Uh, it is on schedule. They are erecting structural steel currently. Remind me which one's 14 and which one is 15. Uh, flex school number 14 is on the east side of Conroe, uh, right next door to Bosman Intermediate. Uh, 15 is Snyder Elementary. So we're not building them in order. Thank you. Um, we are erecting structural steel. Uh, the 
uh, CMU, the concrete block masonry work is, on, in, is in progress. Uh, the air conditioning systems are beginning their rough end. They are being installed and protected. Uh, other infrastructure items are going in place. So it, it is on schedule and right where we need it to be. Flex school number 16, which is in the Wood Forest development. Uh, it is on schedule. It's scheduled to open in August of 2014. Again, they are also erecting structural steel. And it is, it is proceeding. It is on schedule. Uh, 14 and 16 started together. Uh, 14 had a head start because it was actually started in 2008. Um, so the infrastructure was already in place. But they are both uh, proceeding as planned. Yes, sir. I, I don't ask this question out of alarm. I just uh, was asked this question a couple of times this week uh, since our, our the last couple of days. And uh, what, are, what are our roof wind resistance designed for? 90, 100, 140? Do you know? That is a detail I don't carry around with me readily. Fair enough. Ian, do you have that answer? Answer another time. I know it's not 200 or 300. I mean, so no, don't, I, don't no. worry. Uh, in this area, there's a stipulation of code that says 90, Emory County area. It's those wind uplift and they're off. All right, other questions or comments? Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Well. Easy. <laughs> Item five, business and finance, A, bond sales series 2013A. Dr. Stock. Mr. Cox, if you'll come uh, present this item or introduce our presenters. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, I'm here tonight to recommend the Board of Trustees approve the order authorizing the issuance of Conroe Independent School District unlimited tax bonds. Uh, the new bond sale portion of this uh, bond sale is 16 million from the 2008 bond referendum. Uh, this bond sale will, be, will provide the equipment and furnishings for the schools that you just saw that are currently under construction. We'll also provide uh, auxiliary improvements, life cycle replacement projects, technology, land purchases, and buses. Uh, in addition, we're doing a refunding, and uh, Ryan O'Hara with uh, BOSC, our financial advisor, is here tonight to present you some information on the refunding. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Dr. Stockton, members of the board, again, Ryan O'Hara with BOSC, financial advisor of the district. Uh, for those of you on the investment committee, this is a presentation that will be very similar to what we had a few days ago. So. Uh, again, uh, to recap, we are looking at $16 million in new money for projects, uh, but the bulk of this is a refinancing opportunity, and we're looking to do it in two pieces, and I'll walk you through that. Uh, page one is simply an overview of the tax-exempt bond market. That blue line represents uh, where uh, AA uh, GO issues are across the country. You can see uh, following the sequestration uh, and debt ceiling uh, uh, issues at the beginning of the year, rates went up. Uh, but we've been enjoying a nice rally. We're currently we're at a 3.61 and, and rallying uh, even till today. So I think we're, we're entering a, a good uh, phase in the bond market. Uh, this is a uh, comparison of taxable rates versus tax exempt rates. Uh, we typically issue tax exempt bonds. Uh, you can kind of see the separation. The red line represents the 10 uh, year U.S. Treasury, which is a, a, a taxable. And then the blue line is simply a 10-year of that chart that we saw before, uh, which is a, a AAA uh, tax exempt. You can see back in 2005, 6, and 7, that was a, a traditional shape of those two curves. However, today, slide over to the right, look where we are in 2013. Those, the tax exempt and taxable markets are on top of each other. Rates are so low that they've compressed <coughs> down. Uh, so it's a very interesting time in our markets uh, where, where the demand actually for taxable quality taxable uh, investments is very high. The taxable market is actually about five times bigger than the tax exempt market because tax exempt people that are under the U.S. tax code are the only players in that. So there's actually been some instances in the market where we've seen uh, AAA permanent school fund bonds like is what we'll be issuing have actually done better as a taxable. So uh, it's very interesting. Uh, and I'll get into the reasons why we're going to be doing a taxable piece. We're going to be doing part of this uh, about 46 million uh, 46 million three is a tax exempt piece. We've got bonds from the 03 issue, 04A, 05A, and 06. Uh, these bonds are out at an average interest rate of roughly 4.965%. And in today's market, we can take that down to a 2.53, including all costs. 
Next page over is the taxable piece. Uh, the beauty of a taxable piece is we don't have to adhere to the owner's tax laws. Uh, you'll look at the definitions of these two series of bonds are unlimited tax refunding bonds, series 2005A, and unlimited tax building and refunding bonds, series 2006. Tax law basically says you've got to be within 90 days of the call dates if we want to do tax exempt bonds. The call dates on these are in 2015 and 16, so we're doing them as a taxable and we're looking at roughly $57.2 million in those bonds. This is kind of where a lot of numbers on this page, but the left-hand column shows uh, all the outstanding indebtedness for the district. Next column over looks at the bonds that were actually the taxable and the tax-exempt bonds. We're actually looking at refinancing the uh, principal and interest for each of those pieces. And slide over to the right, and we're looking at $8.6 million in savings overall. Uh, you can see in, in 2014, we're looking at roughly $420,000 in savings, and then roughly 580 to 585,000 in years uh, 14, I'm sorry, 15 out to 2028. Again, 8.6 million, uh, inclusive of all uh, uh, cost of issue and testimony. This is the calendar that we're trying to adhere to. We'll begin working on the uh, preliminary official statement, which is the, the document that tells the story of the district as well as this financing. Uh, we'll be talking with the rating agencies uh, week of the June 17th, working on our permit school fund application with the state. Again, that gives us the AAA uh, status. Uh, we'll be looking to price the week of uh, July the 8th and uh, hopefully close the week of uh, July 29th. And what we're asking for your approval tonight is a parameter order that allows us the flexibility to go forward, enter the market. We can go faster or slower, but this is kind of an outline of where we think we're going to be. Uh, we've, I think we've done parameter orders the last four, five years or so. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions? All right, hearing none. All those in favor? All opposed. Yes, motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Yeah. Item 5B, financial reports, Dr. Stock. Mr. Rice, if you'll come present those reports. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Tonight I'm here to present the financial statements for the district for the month of April. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we'll look at is our balance sheet for the district for the month. The balance sheet shows our assets, liabilities, and fund balances. We always like to look uh, at our cash, our, our largest liquid asset we have there. So uh, as you can see, it's all invested in our pools. Always like to track our property taxes and compare where we've been in the past and make sure we're still on that target. We're almost right, identical with that. So what you'll see is in our projections of fund balance uh, in the slides, we've taken that into account. Uh, the next uh, statement is the income statement. It shows our revenues and expenditures. Uh, looking at our local revenues in the general fund and debt service fund, you can see the majority of those are in our taxes. Uh, food services from sales, and self-funded is from premium contributions. And if you want to look at our total expenditures at the functional level, we can see that in general fund majority of our expenses is in the uh, instructional area, uh, debt service fund, debt service, child nutrition, food, and self-funded for plan expenses. As I said, general fund balance, if you look, we're projecting a slight decrease in the fund balance. Last month we had about a $13 million increase projected. Now we've taken into account Bill will be able to move the $16 million to the debt service fund. So we see just a slight decrease in fund balance there. Now debt service fund last month, we had about a $19.9 million decrease in that fund. Now with that $16 million uh, coming over, we've got about a Child nutrition uh, remains the same. Uh, Self-funded insurance uh, for the month of April. We had $2.35 million in revenues, $2.78 million in expenses. For revenues under expenses of $427,000 uh, for the year, that gives us total revenues of $21.8 million, expenses of $21.4 million, or positive balance of $402,000. That includes the three month uh, for, our, for our wellness and health center, uh, we had 515 participants uh, in April. 
by giving us an average of about 600 <coughs> Our 2008 bond referendum, uh, we've currently sold $441 million of our $527 million bond referendum. We've currently expended and encumbered $429 million of that. We're estimating about $26 million left to complete. Uh, that'll give us a projected forecast to complete our bond program of $455 million, leaving us with a contingency available of about $72 million uh, of our $527 million dollar on risk. Our investments, uh, at the end of March, we were at $383 million. By the end of April, $353 million. Uh, we did average maturity. Uh, district is one day. Our pools was eight days. Build the maturity, 0 0.0996. Our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, uh, 0.05. Thank you. Right. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, I believe there's no executive session tonight, so no action needed for executive session. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion. We have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You can stay. <laughs>